Hi, and welcome to this week's Preaching Points for May 19th. We're looking ahead to Pentecost Sunday, which is May 23rd. It is the festival day of Pentecost, which we celebrate every year 50 days after Easter Sunday. And the reading that I will be focusing on in my preaching for this week is the first reading, which comes to us from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams." even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days, I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. So this reading should be very familiar for most of us. It comes around every single year on Pentecost as sort of the foundational story of why we celebrate Pentecost on this day, 50 days after Easter. So we're picking up here Um, from the Gospel of Luke and the beginning of Acts, where we hear about Jesus' ascension. And in Jesus' ascension, he promises to send all of his followers, all of the believers, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the advocate to walk along with them, to support them, to guide them and push them forward into God's mission in the world, giving them the tools that they need to proclaim the gospel. And in this story, we hear how not just Peter and the 11, but all of those gathered in the upper room, which could have easily been 120 people, as we hear, I believe, from John, this 120 person group up in this room, suddenly all speaking different languages with flames of fire, tongues as of flames sitting above their heads. And in that act, in the ability to 
share the good news with all of those gathered in their native languages. We're seeing God's radical gifts of hospitality, God's radical grace and love and inclusivity that works through our differences to help bring us together as one who gives us the gifts that we need for God's mission in the world. So we're going to talk more about all of that on Sunday, and I look forward to the opportunity to gather with you all either in person or digitally and to talk more about the amazing work of the Holy Spirit, especially as we hear about it on Pentecost Sunday, not only in the New Testament, but also the work of the Holy Spirit throughout all of scripture and all of time. And I encourage all of you to wear red. We wear red to represent the fire and flame of the Holy Spirit. So I encourage you to break out those red clothes and I will see you all either in person or I will be with you digitally. Thanks so much and have a great week.